Okay. He usually tunes in early, but. Well, it is 6 p.m., so we might as well get started. Uh, Selectman Lake, could I ask you to read the quote of the evening? Oh, my God, I'd be glad to. When the eagles are silent, the parrots begin to jabber. Sir Winston Churchill. Thank you very much. Uh, and before we get rolling, just as a reminder to everyone, this is a public proceeding. The public is uh, invited to attend. And this is a meeting that is held in um, accordance with the rules dictated to us by the governor under this state of emergency. Uh, and all votes or actions by the Board of Selectmen or Board of Assessors will be taken by roll call. Uh, David, do we have any participants for the Citizens Forum? Uh, we had nothing submitted on the, uh, by email and I see nothing on the chat. Okay, excellent, thank you. Well, let's get started then with the Administrator's Report. Um, just to let you all know, the Budget Committee met after your last meeting and um, they were in agreement with the board's recommendations uh, for the town meeting warrant in terms of any articles that have appropriations of funds, which is what they're supposed to make recommendations on. Um, we have uh, finished the warrant, sent that off to the printer for ballot programming and to get our ballots back in time for absentee voting. Just for anybody that... <clears throat> Excuse me, anybody that's watching, um, absentee ballots uh, will be available in mid-June. You can submit uh, requests uh, at any time, and we just hold those um, until the ballots are actually delivered to us, but um, those will be on their way. Um, since you last met, the governor's issued a couple of different executive orders one of which uh, we, the board had talked about previously in terms of suspending the law regarding uh, due dates and interest on taxes. Uh, so that's now something that's within the board's discretion to do if they so chose. Um, I have not put that, obviously hadn't put that on the agenda. And um, at this point, my recommendation, it being almost two months since taxes were due, and we've had a, uh, probably in excess now of 100 people that have paid with some interest, would be to not, um, not change either due dates or interest. But if that's something the board wishes to do, we can add it on to a future agenda or whatever you want to do there. Have a more in-depth discussion about that. And the last thing I think I had, oh, two other things. Um, we've done our initial road grading for the year um, on our gravel roads, which um, seem to be successful. We have a number of positive comments and I don't think we received any negative. Um, that don't mean, doesn't mean that they're not out there, but we haven't received any. And finally, we finally got word that our speed board trailer grant that we applied for at some point last year not only was approved but we now have the approval to actually expend the money so we'll get going on getting that constructed as well thanks You're welcome yeah that's excellent is that all david uh that's all i believe i have okay uh well let's move along to upcoming meetings and announcements all meetings are uh, remote meetings unless announced otherwise. The Midco Solid Waste Corporation Board of Directors is scheduled to meet Wednesday, May 27th, 6.30. The Lincolnville Planning Board is meeting on Wednesday, May 27th at 7 p.m. The Broadband Committee is scheduled to meet Thursday, May 28th at 7 p.m. And the Board of Selectmen are scheduled to meet next on Monday, June 8th, 6 p.m. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any upcoming community event that anyone wishes to share? Fortunately, not many of those happening these days. 
Uh, and we have two sets of meeting minutes. We first have a set of meeting minutes from May 11th as the Board of Selectmen. Can I have a motion? I move that the board approve the May 11th, 2020 meeting minutes as presented. Second. Moved by Selectman Late, seconded by Selectman Barrows. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion. Selectman Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Late, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Gerritsen, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Dunn, my vote is yes. And Selectman Fishman is absent, so motion passes. And in order to take action on the next meeting minutes that we have, uh, I will entertain a motion, please. I move that we suspend our meeting as the Board of Selectmen and convene as the Board of Assessors. Second. Second. Moved by Selectman Barrows, seconded by Selectman Gerritsen. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion. Selectman Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Late, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Gerritsen, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Dunn, my vote is yes. Uh, motion passes. Now we are convened as the Board of Assessors. I'll entertain a motion for the meeting minutes for that move, meeting. I move that the Board approve the May 18th, 2020 Board of Assessors meeting minutes as presented. A second. Moved by Assessor Late, seconded by Assessor Barrows. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion. Uh, Assessor Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Assessor Late, what's your vote? Yes. Assessor Gerritsen, what's your vote? Yes. Assessor Dunn, my vote is yes. Motion passes. And to get back on with our other business, I will entertain a motion. I move that we adjourn the meeting of the Board of Assessors and reconvene as the Board of Selectmen. A second. Uh, moved by Selectman Gerritsen, seconded by Selectman Barrows. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion. Selectman Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Gerritsen, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Late, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Dunn, my vote is yes. Motion passes. Thank you all very much. And moving along to updates. Uh, Selectman Barrows, do you have an update for us? Nothing at this time. We we'll probably will have at the next meeting. We're having a mid solid waste meeting tomorrow night, and I'm sure that we'll have some points to talk about next time. Okay, great. Selectman Late. Uh, a quick announcement, uh, drop-off schedule, the uh, Midco Solid Waste will now accept recycled materials on a daily basis, Tuesday through Saturday during regular business hours, beginning May 26. Now, there are some that they're not going to be accepting, so if you went to their website, um, I, it's, a, it's a page and a half letter there, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but they're expanding what they can take. So we're starting to open back up down there as well. Okay, great. Uh, Selectman Gerritsen, any updates for us? Yeah, we had a broadband committee meeting two weeks ago. Uh, we met with a representative from LCI and had a uh, productive discussion about uh, sort of how we wanted to move forward. Uh, we're having another meeting on Thursday where we're, we're going to meet with, uh, with some more folks and hopefully come up with a plan to... Um, to write a survey and, and, and find a way to get that out to people in Lincolnville to, to gather thoughts of, of how people feel their internet provider is. Okay, excellent. Um, I have no updates um, other than uh, the reports that are sent out, you'll find in the back of your packet, but the, uh, EMS Review Committee has not had a meeting in quite some time. So moving along, David, I'll hand this over to you. Uh, we have before us a reopening plan uh, that the board needs to confirm or amend for uh, procedures for reopening the town office. Thank you. So at your last uh, meeting the board had tentatively established June 1st as the 
uh, reopening date for in-person transactions here at the town office. Um, I don't think there's anything that's been happening in our neck of the woods that would um, warrant the board reconsidering that in terms of uh, postponing that date. Um, did put together, or before we get to that last, um, um, I don't know what date the, the 20th was, but I think it was some point last week, the uh, state issued a prevention checklist guidance for public and community buildings, which was included in your packet. Um, I believe that our plan hits all the spots on that. Um, we will have to be somewhat limited in terms of the number of people we can have in the town office at one point. So what I've done is I put together um, a little uh, release that we would send forth to the public and put on our website, try to spread the word between now and next Monday. And I'm gonna try to bring this up on the screen. I apologize for not having this done in advance so you could add it as part of your packet, but I will go over it when I, if I'm successful at pulling this up. So hang on. I still see you, David. Yeah, not for long. There we go. Oh, slick. Yeah. It's amazing what somebody can do when they know how to do this. So this is uh, just a little notice that we would uh, try to disseminate to the public about the reopening. And I can envision this, you know, sending it out to the Google group as well as posting it on our website. And we could possibly post it in some public places around town. Um, just to quickly go over this, or I can go over it slowly since you haven't seen it before. Um, it's talked about, a, in essence, a phased reopening of the town office where, would we, where our front counter would be open during what has traditionally been our business hours, 8.30 to 5, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 4.30 on Friday, and beyond the, for all the services beyond the... Uh, front counter, it will be open by appointment only. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through this. Um, we need to obviously have certain restrictions in place to protect the public health and safety of the community. And we're encouraged or required by the industry guidance to encourage people to use online services where possible. Not only redu reduces the amount of wait times that people might have here, but also um, minimizes uh, potential contact and exposures. Talk a little bit about health measures. Maybe I can make this scroll some more if I get to the next slide. Maybe not, there we go. Um, obviously, uh, and signage will be posted on some of these things here at the town office. Uh, not entering the building if you're sick or experiencing symptoms. Um, Notice to people that have traveled, both residents and non-residents, if you've traveled outside of the state, when you return, you're supposed to self-quarantine for 14 days. We are asking people that are in that self-quarantine period not to come to the town office. Obviously, if you're in quarantine, you're not supposed to be out coming to the town office, but um, we've had people that have um, taken liberties with that to date, so I think it's helpful to get it out there to the public. Um, to keep people healthy, um, we're requesting people to come to the town office to wear face coverings. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what happens if people don't um, further on down in this or can't or don't have that ability. Um, in order to provide social distancing and to uh, um, meet with the guidance put out by the state, um, we'll, we'll have room for two customers at the counters. Um, with both counters being open. Um, and when I say customers, uh, we would primarily want one person only to come to each counter, but there is room if a parent would, were to come with a child or something like that, we wouldn't make the parent leave the child outside as long as they could be at the counter um, with the social distancing necessary and required. 
Um, we will have markings outside if we get to the point where we have um, more than two people or two customers needing transactions. We will ask people to wait outdoors. We'll have markings on the ground and visible markings so people will know where to wait and how far to be separated apart outside. Obviously, we can't control the weather. Uh, so it's kind of reminding people to dress appropriately, whether that be sunscreen or a raincoat or a couple weeks ago would have been a uh, snow jacket. And um, the way the building's set up in cleaning uh, we're not going to be able to have uh, public access to the restrooms at the when we first open. Uh, phase one being uh, next Monday. And if I go in too fast or somebody has some comments, concerns, something, holler. Um, otherwise, I'll just keep talking, sliding this down. Phase one beginning next Monday, June 1st. Limited service at the front counter only. Uh, again, encouraging people to use the online services. Uh, we have the office hours again up there. We've put in there um, that um, people would come to the front door, but that we've asked that people be in line by 4.30. Uh, we don't know at this point how many people are actually going to um, line up or be here. Um, obviously, if there was no line and people showed up at 440, we'd let them in and help them. But if there's a line of 20 people, um, we've got to have a cutoff somewhere. Um, and just I, I randomly picked 430 as a time to say, be able to go out and say, OK, David, you're the last person in line. And then just kindly tell anybody else that comes if there's a line of, you know, Six people, we're going to have to have you come back at a different time. If you want to have us um, open longer or later, we'll just need to be prepared to compensate the hourly employees um, for however long they're going to be here. Again, uh, two customers in the building at one time. We do expect that there will be some lines um, throughout various portions in June. We're asking people to be patient as they wait while we assist other residents and to keep the, again, the separation distance um, while people are waiting outside. Uh, code enforcement and assessing, we don't have space that would allow for social distancing in those offices or getting back to those offices. So we're, um, for the time being, providing those services via telephone, email, or we can do them off-site by appointment only. Uh, Vern did express some concerns when you when spoke with him as assessors about meeting off-site, but uh, with certain things for inspections or whatnot, if people want appointments, I think we can make that arrangement. That's what code enforcement has been doing as well um, during the time that we've been closed to in-person transactions. We've been offering that. Uh, we won't have walk-in services for obvious reasons. If people walk in and want to see the code officer, we can't let them back in. We don't have a spot for them to meet. Um, I guess we can encourage people to make an appointment or, or to call. Um, for at-risk individuals, um, we would like people to call in advance, such as if you had an underlying condition um, that made you at more at risk, um, certainly call. We can do, you know, 95% of stuff over the phone. We can certainly have that all prepared. If you were doing a car re-registration and didn't, couldn't access it online, we can do most of that. Um, again, over the phone, tell you what the amount would be. Have you come and call us from the parking lot or say we'll be there in a half an hour and we'll make arrangements to have somebody come out and take care of you um, separately from the front counter. Uh, we do have personal protective equipment for staff available so they can do that. And then we've listed uh, programs and services that are unavailable. Um, it's not so much that the services won't be available, but some of the spaces 
um, won't be available right off the map room, the conference room where I am now, the restrooms, the meeting room, and again, the back offices for finance and code enforcement assessing myself. Uh, just we don't have the space to provide the necessary social distancing. Uh, again, we provide the phone number so that people can call. We can make alternative arrangements or try to come, try to take care of their um, their needs over the phone or via email or something like that. Um, online meetings, looking for those to continue, um, just because we don't have the spacing available to in the meeting room. Um, if, if you recall, we set that up for um, social distance meeting back at the, in mid-March. Um, you were all spaced out um, so that we couldn't have had any public in that room. Uh, the law is going to allow us to continue to have online meetings for a period of time or remote meetings. Uh, so we're looking through what I'm calling phase one to continue to have um, any committee that wants to meet online to meet online. And we've been posting how to do that on the website. We'll continue to drive people that way. Um, and then phase two basically is I put in here dates to be determined. Um, you know, as the pandemic allows, we'll be looking to restore more and more services similar to what we had pre-pandemic. Um, and those will come to the board when we can say, it's, you know, we believe it's now safe to have in-person meetings, um, that we can do that and still re meet any requirements that come forth. And then you folks will get to be able to make that call as to whether or not you agree or disagree that that's reasonable. Um, obviously, we're going to continue to have online services. We had that pre-pandemic. We'll have that post-pandemic um, and during the pandemic. And so those things are available on our website, everything from requesting absentee ballots to re-registration of dogs to re-registration cars trailers, boats, ATVs, snowmobiles, um, a lot of that stuff you can do at the front counter, you can do online. And then um, I think it's reasonable to consider that anybody that's at high risk, uh, that we would continue to offer any special accommodations uh, so that they can continue to conduct their business. Give us a call, shoot us an email. Um, also, if there's somebody that, um, um, we talked a little bit about requesting that people wear face coverings when they come to the town office. If somebody uh, either doesn't have, doesn't wish to, um, for whatever reason, won't wear one, um, we could offer also also offer to uh, provide those services uh, remotely outside um, if we can get them to comply. I don't know as we would. necessarily um, exclude someone of service. I'm not quite sure how we would enforce that. We will have the um, protective um, screens or sneeze guards up in advance of uh, the opening, but that's kind of what I just put together for a public um, notice about the reopening and certainly open to comments, concerns, questions, on that or any of the checklist material that's in your packet. Any thoughts from the board? I did have a chance to review this earlier with David and um, David, thank you. I think that's, I think it looks great and is as comprehensive as we can get it. I think I it take, looks great too. Shall I take it off the screen? It does, it looks, it looks very good. And I don't think, I, I don't see how we could be any more accommodating um it's, it's what we need to do we uh -huh. need to consider the the people in the town office and we also want to take care of the town i think this is the best way to do it i would agree with that i think it looks very well thought through we did have um suggestion to consider um going to an all appointment to open up um i didn't i don't know as i thought that was um uh, completely practical. I think we've, we've struck a happy medium where people that um, feel at risk 
can, in essence, make an appointment and do most of their things over the phone, and we can we can accommodate. Um, I most of um, most of the places I'm familiar with are looking at opening June first. Some have already opened, or some have never closed the uh, public coming in either. So, okay. Any more questions for David on uh, our plan for reopening? Okay, uh, I'll entertain a motion. I move that the board confirm our previously established reopening date for in-person transactions at the town office June 1, 2020. Moved by Selectman Barrows. Seconded by Selectman Late. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, Selectman Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Late, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Gerritsen, what's your vote? Yes. And Selectman Dunn, my vote is yes. Thank you very much. And as things change rapidly or have the potential to change uh, rapidly, uh, David has made the suggestion that uh, we ask the board to make a motion to um, rather than necessarily bogging down in the process of waiting for the next meeting um, that should we require an emergency temporary closure uh, pending further board review um, that you give us the ability to do that. I move that the town administrator after con consultation with the board chair or in her absence, the vice chair, be empower temporarily to close the town office to in-person transactions should the pandemic situation warrant closure and that should a temporary closure be enacted that each board be contacted immediately by the administrator or the chair and that a duly noticed public meeting be called within three business days after the closure for the board to review the closure decision. Second. Uh, moved by Selectman Gerritsen, seconded by Selectman Late. Is there any discussion? Uh, just to clarify, board member, but yeah, board member. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> um, if there's no further discussion, uh, Selectman Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Late, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Gerritsen, what's your vote? Yes. Uh, Selectman Dunn, my vote is yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, and we have before us, you have in your packet, um, the five town CSD budget um, validation referendum warrant. Uh, David, do you have any comment on this? Um, no, with the, um, certainly would not with the election warrant because the election warrant calls for the voting on the um, validation referendum to be on Tuesday, June, sorry, Tuesday, July 14th, which is when we'll have election day. I am still somewhat concerned as to how both the five town CSD and the Lincolnville Central School uh, School Committee will hold their budget meetings. Um, right now there's a limitation and as of June 1st that um, large gatherings will be limited at 50. I'm still not sure how they're going to do that. I keep hearing rumblings that the governor may issue an executive order regarding school budgets or how they're adopted and may extend that to town meetings. But until such time as something comes out, it's, you know, it's not there. Um, so I'm not quite sure how the budget meeting will occur, but hopefully some guidance will be forthcoming when, and or they're working on it. So I guess I would approve, um, I'd approve the notice for election. Ho hopefully they'll have a budget meeting prior. The school committee, uh, the five town CSD has um, set their budget meeting for July 2nd. Um, that's their that's their prerogative, I guess, at this point, uh, not knowing how they're going to do that. But um, and the Lincolnville Central School has tentatively um, they're aiming for a July 1st 
uh, budget meeting, but again, they're waiting for some more guidance from the state on that, how to safely conduct that. Are they, I, I saw that, I was surprised. Um, I guess the hope is that restrictions are going to be lifted on number of persons that can gather? Well, either that or one of the proposals that um, was seen that I've seen is perhaps setting up multiple rooms with um, ways to participate from those alternative settings. Like in the Lincolnville Central School, let's say they set up in the, in the gymnasium, socially distanced seating, and they stayed, you know, 50 or under there. And then they set up an overflow in the Walsh Common where the meeting could somehow be broadcast or transmitted in there and there could be two-way communication. Um, but who knows? The other thing that might come down is they may, um, for these type of budget meetings, they might lift the maximum number provided social distancing could be in place and face coverings or something like that. I could see, you know, in the gymnasium at the school, uh, if you put a chair every, you know, eight feet apart, um, you could get a fair number of people in there. But again, I just don't know when and how. Yeah. Uh, questions or comments from the board on this. Well, I, I know there's not a lot we can do about this per se, but I had a chance to look through that and it's so disappointing to see all the monies that's going in there. And, you know, my personal opinion is our own school needs to step up their game. Um, they struggled extremely hard and I know we, there were a lot of schools caught off guard, but is there any thought of the future on how they're going to teach when the kids aren't in school. Um, I, I hear from a lot of parents with our school, especially, um, they need to step up their game because it's not working. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's frustrating. I know we can't do anything about it. There's big numbers in there for a number of things. Um, and you know, maybe this was a time that I got a chance to look at it a little bit more carefully um, because of what's going on with, with everything. And I know we did our very best to help our taxpayers by, um, you know, removing some stuff that didn't necessarily need to happen in the next year or two. Um, I don't see any of that here. <laughs> I don't see any of it. I don't, I don't hear of anybody saying, you know something, maybe we need to rethink this. I, you know, and I don't hear it from our school board. I don't hear it from any of these guys. So it's disappointing. Well, I, I, I know we got to go with it. I, I will jump in and say the five town CSD did um, their board did revisit their budget and they're actually the most recent that reflect that, that warrant is, is a little lower than lower than What's requested? What's requested? What we paid this what year. We paid this year. I, I, that's good. I'm glad to hear that, David. But when I look through there and I see three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to renovate a lecture room, sorry, I, I can't even. I, I can't even think about it. To be real honest with you, but it is what it is. Indeed. Uh, I'll entertain a motion if someone wants to make one. I move that the board approve and countersign the warrant and notice of election calling Five Town Community School District Budget Validation Referendum to be conducted on July 14th, 2020. I'll second it. Moved by Selectman Gerritsen, seconded by Selectman Barrows. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, Selectman Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Late, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Garrison, what's your vote? Yes. And Selectman Dunn, my vote is yes. The motion passes. Thank you.
And we have the treasures and payroll warrants to approve and sign. And I just wanted to make a comment. It looks like David folks at the town office are making a real effort and <laughs> saving pennies. <laughs> so thank you for that. Can I have a motion, please? That's I nothing move. new. <laughs> I, I move that the board approve the treasurers and payroll warrants. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Selectman Barrows made the motion. Selectman Late seconded. Is there a discussion? I had one question, David. The, I see there was a rental of a sweeper, and then we paid an individual to sweep. Were that two different? He didn't have any equipment of his own, so we we rented a power sweeper. Is that what we did? Yes, it's exactly. Okay. Thank you for the question. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, Selectman Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Late, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Gerritsen, what's your vote? Yes. And Selectman Dunn, my vote is yes. Motion passes. Is there any other business the board wishes to attend to? I just have. Oh, yep. I, I, do, I just have something that I just want to mention. It's something that I've been noticing um, uh, that's happening around town, and it it's happened before, and it kind of goes unnoticed and and everything. But it just appears that there is um, household articles just being stuffed out beside the road or put out behind a barn in a field or things of that nature. I'm not sure if it's actually household trash, but things are starting to appear. And some could say it's an indication that things are tightening up for people and they are doing what they got to do. Um, others would say, well, uh, they're just going to do it because they don't care. Um, I would hate to see our town become, especially on Main Street and some of these beautiful roads here in town, become a place, a, a dumping place. Um, I, I almost spoke to someone, but I don't know what I would say. Um, and I just, I, I wonder, I wonder how that conversation would go. Would that be a um, code enforcement officer? Do we have a code against something like that? You know, that type of thing. Um, but maybe it's because I'm seeing it more or maybe I'm just, I got more time. I don't know. But I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but I know I'm seeing it and not just in a couple areas either. So I just wanted to bring that up. I, I just, I don't know how to approach it. Um, this is a beautiful little town and, you know, when you start putting stuff outside the road or out behind your building or whatever, one thing leads to another, then it attracts, you know, it's less desirable to look it, it, it attracts less desirable things like animals, things of that nature, uh, animals that we wouldn't necessarily want around. So I just don't know. I just wanted to get that out there. I don't know if any of the other selectmen, um, have seen anything like this. Um, certainly I can talk to you if you want to on a, you know, on the QT so that you can know the things that I've seen. Um, but I just, I don't know how to go about it. That's all. Certainly if there is a, a potential public health issue, it's something that the uh, code enforcement officer slash health officer slash plumbing inspector uh, can explore or investigate. There are certain things that are allowable by ordinance or state law, and there are certain activities that aren't. And he's the, um, the point of contact. So I would encourage anybody that uh, 
was concerned to contact Frank directly or you can contact me and let me know where and I'll pass that on to Frank. And if it's allowable, we'll let you know it's allowable. And if it's not, we'll work with the homeowner to get it remedied or the property owner. I shouldn't call it a homeowner. It might be a business too. So. Yeah. Okay. That's great, David. Thank you. Yes, David. I was very neglectful in under administrator's report. You know, all these things come to me. Uh, not to, uh, I want to make sure we extend thanks to the work party from the Lincolnville Boat Club. Uh, they had a crew of five, five individuals show up Friday morning of last week, um, installed the new deck panels that had just shown up recently for the broken floats at Breezemere Park. Um, and they got those changed out in no time. And then uh, big thanks to uh, Ed Herbert and Mike Devine for launching the floats. Volunteers all across the board. Absolutely, thank you very much. That's excellent. That's great. Thank Wonderful. Okay, At last call for final <laughs> business for administrators or selectmen. <laughs> Seeing nothing, I'll entertain a final motion. I move to adjourn. Second. Selectman Barrow motioned, uh, Selectman Gerritsen seconded. Any discussion there? Seeing nothing, Selectman Barrows, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Late, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Gerritsen, what's your vote? Yes. Selectman Dunn, my vote is yes. Our business is concluded. Thank you all very much. Thanks and goodbye. Good night.